Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel. Today we're actually going to go over how to set up the communications on Crimson if you ever want to uh, do parallel wiring of your vibration sensors um, using banner wireless radios. So we've actually seen this application come up quite, a, quite often now, so um, I felt that this video needed to be made. I will put everything that I use as far as my hardware goes in the description box below. If you have any questions, contact your local regional manager for your territory, wherever you're from. So I just want to show you this quick uh, setup of what I have here. These are my, I have actually have three vibration sensors in parallel. Uh, Turk makes a really cool little splitter tee that is, um, that works for these type of applications so I'll put the part number um, down below as well. They also make a nice cord set that we use to divide up our signals for RS-45 and uh, power which is all coming from the radio. So side here will go to the radio and the other will go to our HMI in the RS-45 port and then the other side, the, the single end, will go to power to divide up that signal. So uh, the purpose of, the vid of this video is going to be to help you learn how to set up the communication side, um, both on the banner radio side and also on the, on the crimson side. So I'm, I'm not going to go over how to bind the radios. There's plenty of videos out there that show you how to do this. But just be aware that when you're dealing with multi-hop networks, which this is what we're doing here, um, this is a feature of only the multi-hop radios, so you cannot do this on a performance radio. Um, but when you're dealing with multi-hop radios, you have to make sure that you set each node as its own slave ID. So uh, when you're binding your radios, make sure your gateway is uh, one address and then your node is going to be another address. So they're actually not going to match. Um, so just be careful when you're binding all of that stuff. If you need any help learning how to do that, um, the actually the data sheet that comes with the with the radios is it helps you go through the procedures. So it's very simple. Um, so we won't waste your time with that right now. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is teach you how to set up uh, the banner side. Um, how to set up your individual vibration sensors. The first thing we're gonna have to do here is go to your sensor configuration tool software. You'll also need your USB to RS-45 cable converter. You can get one from Banner, or if you have one laying around, you can use that also. Just make sure that you have one and you can connect to it and it comes up on your uh, computer. So uh, mine automatically, um, came up. This is the default baud rate, so I'll go ahead and just connect to it. So with the software, it automatically detects what kind of sensor you're hooking up to. Um, <clears throat> this first page is the dashboard and it'll actually give like a live graphical view of the velocity of the sensor. So you can, you know, if you think you're your vibration sensor is like going out or something and you want to troubleshoot it and see what's actually going on there, you can see all of these uh, values also through this configuration tool. Okay, so you'll notice that my, bot, my Modbus slave ID is number 13. Um, this is automatically detected if you are plugging in this for the first time out of the box. You'll probably have a 1 right here. So what we want to do is we need to change that. We need to uh, make sure that we can uh, set a slave ID different from the rest of your um, devices out in, the, in your network. So uh, 1 through 10 are actually reserved for uh, the multi-hop radios. So you actually have to start at slave ID number 11. Um, so the way I have it set up is my gateway is set as number 11. My node is set up as number 12, and then my first vibration sensor that's running parallel to three other vibration sensors is set to number 13, and my other two are 14 and 15. So what you want to do here is go ahead and select the number that you want to set. I mean, you don't have to start with 13, but 
you have another idea, you can organize it however you want. Go ahead and set it, and then go ahead and do a get, just to make sure you actually wrote what you, what you, what you set. Okay, so if you go back to the vibration uh, dashboard, you'll see that this number here, your Modbus Slave ID, should have automatically been updated. So if that did not get updated, you might have a problem back here, do it again. Um, I'll just show you real quick. If you enable pulling and you start pulling, you actually get all of the values here that are available in the, in the sensor. And then you also get a graphical view here. So I'm actually shaking my vibration sensor quite a bit so you have that velocity here and a timestamp. And so this is actually pretty much it. This is all you have to do to, to set a slave ID address on your vibration sensor and once you do this um, the rest is pretty much all done in crimson you'll need to repeat this step for every single sensor that you need to set a slave ID for we are now ready to start setting up the communications on Red Lion on putting all of that in crimson so let's go ahead and open up crimson and remember, we're doing this over RS-485, so on the left-hand side in the navigation pane, uh, this is where you would set up your communications. So um, let's go ahead and set the driver for the RS-485 to Modbus. Remember, we're doing Modbus and using a setting the, the red line device as a universal master. Okay, so you'll notice it automatically gave me a PLC-1 by default. So let's go ahead and just give that a name. In this case, I'm going to give it the part number of what I'm actually using. So DX80, um, and then I want to give it the ID number that I have this set for. So I am using for my gateway, slave ID number 11. Um, okay, click, go, click return, and then on the right hand side, uh, the only setting that you really have to change here is the actual address number which Crimson uh, calls the drop number so this is where we give it a number 11 here okay and so then we're gonna do this for every device that we have connected so if we go back here to the comps port we're gonna go down here where it says add to additional device and it'll give me another little block of another little PLC so we'll give it another name in this case, I'm using the DX80 DR9M H2 underscore ID number 12. So again, I'll update this to number 12 here as well. And let's just set the rest of the devices on here. So I have my QM, I have my third device, which is my vibration sensor, which is a QM42 BC2. And that is slave ID number 13. Again, we'll change the drop number to 13. Let's add our number 14 here. QM42T. QM42T2 underscore ID 14. And we'll give that drop number 14 as well. And our final device, number 15 which is QM4252 or ID15. Okay, so this is how, um, oops, and we forget to add the drop number here. So this is pretty much it on setting up your comms port. Um, again, remember we we set number, slave ID number one through 10 are reserved for, um, for banners. So we're starting off with 11, that's my gateway. Number 12 is my node. 13 is the start of my three uh, QM4, my vibration sensors in parallel. So now that we have our, our communication set up, let's do a test and see if we have communication. Let's go ahead and do a numeric tag because we're bringing a number in. Um, let's give it a name. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's reference the data sheet. So if you go to bannerengineering.com, uh, we have a really good website. Uh, go to the right-hand side in the in the search bar. Type in the part number that you're looking for. Which in this case, is the vibration sensor, and it should take you straight to this page. Um, 
And here you can reference everything that uh, you need to set this up. So here some of the uh, uh, the data sheet, um, wiring information, mounting, etc. Uh, real quick. Uh, you'll notice we also have uh, some other sensors like a temperature, humidity, we have a GPS, and then an ultrasonic. All of these are set up the exact same way as this vibration and temperature sensor. Um, so you can do this with any of those. I just happen to have the vibration sensors and it seems to be a more common application these days. So, um, but yeah, you can, you can do the same thing there. If you scroll down, you'll see your holding registers, and this is where we're actually going to reference our addressing for this um, setup. So our first value here is our Z RMS velocity in inches per second, and then you can also get it in millimeters per second. So um, you'll also notice that we have some data here, some limits on, on maybe the scaling of the tag that we're going to set up. So let's just kind of keep this in mind. Do a copy of your register address so you don't forget it. And remember, this is your Z RMS velocity in inches per second. So let's go back to Crimson. Let's give it a name. This is going to be your Z RMS velocity in inches per second, right? Okay. So first of all, we got to set where it's coming from. So let's, for example, let's try our first uh, vibration sensor here, number 13. It'll pop up my little addressing window. Remember, all of these are going to be in the holding register, so the number four um, set of tags. Let's paste that address. And here, Crimson, you'll notice, already gives you that four. So this is kind of redundant, and if you leave this four in here, it'll not work. So I just kind of edit that and click OK. Okay, so you can treat this um, as a read only if you wanted to. I mean, we're just gonna be reading the velocity, so I guess the right way would be to do it that way, right? Um, if you wanted to scale it, to actually see what the number means, you can scale to floating points. It's, since it's kind of a decimal, if you remember, if we go back here, it's a decimal point. So. Uh, our data is actually from 0 to 65535 in the data sheet. And what we actually want to see is a value between 0 and 6.5535. And that's what these numbers here mean. Okay? So, that's pretty much it here. You can also, for there's, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do here. You can format your numbers to do... Um, hexadecimal, decimals, uh, you can see a lot of different things, so you can set alarms, triggers. For now, let's just, let's just see what we get from here. You'll notice my little icon next to my tag turned green with a little pie symbol. Um, so let's go ahead, I had done this earlier, so let's go ahead and click over here on your right hand side. This is kind of the bank where all of our stuff will be, our images and our tags and our programs. Here's the tag we created, it's drag and drop, make this a little bit wider. And um, let's go ahead and zap it, I'm connected over USB so I can't just show you my web server here, um, but I am doing a separate screenshot here so you can actually see my my hardware and the numbers here changing. So you'll notice that it um, it it did change there. Now, one thing that I missed earlier, and I don't know if you caught it, but your baud rate needs to match the baud rate of your radio. So make sure all of these things here are set up exactly the same way as your wireless radios are. So if you change this on your radio for some reason, uh, make sure you make this match that. Otherwise it will not work. But by default, the radios come at 19200. So if you didn't move anything, just make sure your settings kind of look like this. 
Okay, so now that you've actually set up uh, your communications and you've set a tag and you've tested the tag to see if you're actually getting a value there and communication, um, this is pretty much uh, the conclusion of this video. So um, all I want to do now is show you kind of an example of something I did earlier um, building on what I went through this video with you. Um, so for example, here's kind of a dashboard with the setup of a motor and the, this image just came in from, from the library within Crimson. Here's three vibration sensors that I set up. If you were to click on one of them, it should take you to one of the pages here. And I set up a trend viewer with the Z and the X RMS values. Um, there's a few videos out here by Joe Laskis, so if you go to his channel, you can learn how to do this. Um, and I just brought in the tags here so you can have like a, a live view um, similar to what you would see on the sensor configuration tool software. Uh, but this, uh, and I did this for node one, node two, node three. You can take a screenshot of what I used here for this demo if you want to. Uh, but this is all the hardware used and this is uh, some of the software as well. So if you ever want to see a live demo, just get in touch with one of the regional managers in your area. Uh, if you don't know someone, go to our website www.adcreps.com. All of the information that you'll need, I will uh, put in the description box below. So if you have any questions, feel free to make a comment or reach out to me personally. Okay, thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.